My team is creating a new product, and we have lots of work to do. I'll show you how we're using this Windows SharePoint Services site to connect people to the right resources and get work done faster. First, let me show you around our site homepage. Our site came with a default page layout, navigational hyperlinks, and lists such as announcements, calendar, and links. This row of tabs is called the top link bar. It contains links to our most popular sites, such as the planning wiki for our manual. When I create a new site, I can add a link to the bar. We use the quick launch to open documents, calendars, blogs, and more. I can customize it by adding or removing links and changing their order. I'll use the quick launch to open our new product documents library. This library is where we store documents to support the new product release. The library also stores information about each document, such as when it was last modified and which department owns it. Let me show you how I added the department column to our library. On the settings menu, I clicked create column. Next, I selected the choice type of column and type the names of departments further down on the page. These departments appear in a drop-down list that we'll see when we upload a document. Now when I upload or create a document, I can select the department name from the drop-down list and specify other information about the document. If I switch to my word processing program, which is compatible with Windows SharePoint services, I can also view and change the same document properties, including the drop-down list of department names. Now let's close our program and return to our library. In our library, we can store and create different types of content. Our site owner sets up multiple content types, each with its own template and properties. To create a document, I click the New menu and then click the type of document I want to create, such as a news release, contract, or marketing presentation. After a file is created, many people work together to review and update it before it's finished. We don't want multiple people changing a file at the same time, so we check out files before we work on them. To check out this file, I point to its name and then click Check Out. When I'm using a program that is compatible with Windows SharePoint services, I can work with a file on my own computer or take it with me on my laptop. I just select Use My Local Drafts folder. When a file is checked out, its icon changes. People can point to the icon to see who the file is checked out to. Right now, I'm the only person who can work on this file. When I check the file back in, my team can see my changes. Another way we manage information is by tracking versions in our lists and libraries. Let's look at the version history of this news release. Each version is numbered. Our library tracks major versions when files are ready for review and minor versions when we're still updating a file. Changes to properties are also tracked, such as when Pia added a title to this document. If I needed to restore a previous version, I would just point to the version I want, click the arrow, and then click Restore. I like the latest version, so I won't do that right now. To return to my library, I can use breadcrumb navigation. These breadcrumbs help people understand where they are in the site structure. I'll click New Product Documents to return to the regular view of our library. You've seen that our documents change often, and you might be wondering how I stay updated on all the changes. On the Actions menu, I can subscribe to RSS feeds or alerts to stay current. Sometimes we need to control access to sensitive documents, such as this Fabricam contract. To do that, we use permission levels to determine who can edit and view our content. Our site owner maintains permission levels for our whole site, but sometimes we need unique settings for specific files. I start by going to the Actions menu and clicking Edit Permissions. Then, I select Team Site Members. As you can see, they currently have permission to contribute to this document. Now I'll show you another area of our site that helps us feel more secure about our content. Even though we are careful, my team is worried about deleting the wrong document. When we delete items, they are sent here, to the Site Recycle Bin, where we can recover them. To restore this news release, I select its checkbox and click Restore Selection. Let's go back to the home page now. Staying on top of dates and events is important to our busy team. 
Here, we can see current events or click Calendar to see all our activities. We use our team calendar to track important milestones, events, and meetings. I can easily view a different month or year. If I want to change an event, I just click to edit it. Now I'll show you another way that we manage schedules. Our new product tasks list shows me the status of several tasks at once. The bars are for tasks and diamonds are for milestones. The bars colors show the progress. For example, Planning for the launch event is about halfway complete. Now, let's return to the home page. The calendar and product tasks lists are just two types of lists. Here's a special type of content called a wiki. We use this wiki to brainstorm ideas for our training manual. People can add ideas whenever they want. See this dotted line? It's a placeholder for a page that someone can create later when they want to share ideas. Here's another site I like. Our product vision blog helps us plan our vision and spread the word about our product launch. I can click each blog post to see comments or even post my own. The comments are a great way to view and respond to feedback. Now I'll return to our home page. With all the content that you've seen on our site, you might wonder how we can find what we need. To find specific content, I use search. I'll look for any items containing Fabricam in the results, I see all items that contain Fabricam and details about those items. I can click a link to open content, but for now, I'll return to the home page again. Now that I've shown you our content and how we find it, I'll show you how we can share it with new people. I start by clicking People and Groups, and then I'll add our new team member, Bob Kelly, to our Team Site Members group. On the new menu, I click Add Users. Then, I search for Bob in my address book and add him as a member. Our site can even send mail to welcome Bob to our site. Now Bob can start contributing to our site. Now that you've seen how we use our site, I hope you're ready to explore how a SharePoint site can help your team connect and get work done.